My name is Diamond and I'm a sophomore at Burke County High School. I know how it is to be kind of looked over and put in a group. Um, when Diamond was in seventh grade, she got in trouble and she had to do a whole year in alternative school. I first heard of our student Diamond when Ms. Mobley and Mr. Dalton came to me with concerns about the classroom setting that she was assigned to. She had a lot of data showing that she was very exceptional in the sense that she had exceeded on several parts of the CRCT. However, she was not placed in advanced courses nor gifted courses due to work ethic and grades, report card grades in the past. You know, there are a lot of different things you can glean from that data all being there on one page. And the fact that we have all the longitudinal data right there, that misconceptions that can be cleared up immediately. Me as an educator, this whole experience with Diamond has been very important. I don't think that she believed that she fit in with the most brilliant students in her school. She does. I think she realizes that now. It wasn't until recently that I was informed Diamond had been at the alternative school and truly my jaw dropped because it's not the child that's in my class today. That's not the adult, the young lady, the absolutely glowing prospect of the future that's there. When I first heard that Diamond had been an alternative school student, um, I was shocked because typically I think as a veteran teacher that I can see some of the signs of those transitioning back into the uh, regular setting and I saw none of those in Diamond. Before eighth grade I didn't really value education that much because I was more focused on the people around me and their view of education and I thought well if they don't think it's that important then why should I? I mean we're all the same. At the beginning of eighth grade I kind of felt the same way until I, a teacher I had just gotten there and if I caught her attention that quickly then maybe I wasn't the same as them and I shouldn't have the same views as them. Mr. Dalton and Miss Mobley um, with Diamond Story ha have inspired me. Um, I, I also need to be a good listener and look at all of those signs. Like I said, a child has a story and they want you to hear their story. Um, our students need validation. We do know that Diamond's self-esteem improves significantly and her ability to relate to her peers elevated. All too often we lose students to a dropout society because they don't fit in with the mold of all the other students and they slip through the cracks because there's not somebody there to grab them and say you're worth it, stick with it, this is what you can do. Um, I always think as educators we have to look beyond um, the surface and the data just with Diamond, I mean, proves it. Somebody saw something and they dug a little deeper and they looked a little harder. For me, I mean, it's an inspiration to take that extra step, to look for that child who has been struggling in the classroom, but all the data shows that they exceed in everything and that maybe they are just not flourishing in that setting, that they need to be offered another opportunity. And maybe there could be so many more students like Diamond who, um, need someone sometimes not just to open the door but to kick the door down maybe teachers will say there's something else there and they will take that extra time to go in and look at the data and see uh, what is this child trying to tell me and listen to them